So, today we will discuss infinite series of real numbers. We have already discussed the uh, sequences and various concepts regarding the sequence. So, uh, today we will talk about the infinite series. We define normally when we say if a set of uh, element x 1, x 2, x n are given a sequence when they are added or subtracted and put it in the form of x 1 plus minus x 2 l like this, then we call it a series, but that is not a authentic way of defining the series, because it does not show anything whether the limit convergent or divergent whatever. So, we define the series as follows, if x which is a sequence of real numbers x n is a sequence in R, in R means set of real numbers, then the infinite series infinite series uh, generated by x is this terms sequence x n is the sequence is the sequence s of partial sum x k defined by s 1 is the first term say x 1 s 2 is the sum of the first term that is s 1 plus x 2, s 3 is s 2 plus x 3 and so on. So, s n will be or s k uh, will be s k minus 1 plus x k that is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 up to x k the number x k the number numbers x k or x n this is these are called the terms of the series of the series and the number s k s k are called partial sums are called partial sum partial sums of this series this s k means some of the first k term of the series and so on. Now, if this limit if the limit of s that is the limit of s k when k tends to infinity if this limit exists then we say the series then we say the series is convergent is convergent and has the sum s has the sum s we denote the series as sigma x n n is 1 to infinity if first term is x 1 or sometimes we also denote like x n without the suffix that shows that summation is taken from 1 to infinity. So, this is the way of defining n or some other if the first term is starting from x 0 then the summation will be taken from 0 to infinity and like this well, and if the series whose first term is say x 100 then the series will start from n equal to 100 to infinity. So, that way we can identify them. Okay. 
Now, if this limit does not exist, then in that case we say the series diverges. If the limit s k when k tends to infinity does not exist, it means either it is infinite plus infinity or minus infinity or has a various limits does not exist, then we say then we say then we say the series sigma x n 1 to infinity diverges. Okay. So, that is the for example, we have a series suppose we have the series sigma r to the power n n is, uh, n is 1 to infinity. Now, we that is the series 1 plus r plus r square and so on plus r to the power n like this. So, this is the series. Now, we claim if mod of r is strictly less than 1, then series converges. Converges and the sum of the series and sum is equal to 1 over 1 minus r. Sum will be this, but if r is equal to 1, if r is mod r is greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges. Diverge. The proof is very simple solution. Let us find the first sum of the first n terms. So, let S n is the sum of the first n terms 1 plus r plus r square plus r to the power n. This is the sum of the first term r n minus 1 because this will be first term second n up to n terms. Okay. Then if I multiply this by r then what happen r times s n this is equal to what r plus r square plus r n minus 1 plus r n now is subtracted. So, this implies that 1 minus r s n when it subtracted it get cancelled in that and we get finally 1 minus r to the power n. So, what we get it is s n becomes 1 by 1 minus r minus r to the power n over 1 minus r. Okay. So, consider mod of s n minus 1 over 1 minus r that is equal to mod of r to the power n over mod 1 minus r. Now, r I am choosing fixed, but it is less than 1. If it is less than 1, this term will go to 0. So, this tends to 0 as mod r is strictly less than 1. Therefore, the limit of this s n as n tends to infinity is exist and equal to 1 minus r. So, this series converges and converges to the sum 1 over 1 minus r. For r is equal to 1, obviously the terms are 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. So, up to s n will be n. So, when n is infinity it, uh, limit s n will tends to infinity. So, it will diverge. For r greater than 1, we will see in due course that it also diverges. In fact, it will limit will not exist and it will go to infinity. So, that we will come and obviously, we can find out the sum. Okay. So, this is very interesting one. Similarly, another examples, uh, this part we will take up after going for the further uh, test, then we say automatically by pth test it will come diverges. And then let us take the sum this series sigma 1 over n n plus 1 n is 1 to infinity we claim this converges and sum is sum is 1. The solution is again simple 
if I take the terms S n, what have been this term R? S n R 1 over 1 into 2 plus 1 over 2 into 3 plus 1 over up to say n is 1 into n n plus 1. So, this will be if we write it in the form since since 1 over k k plus 1 we can break up and put it in the form of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. So, using this each term we can put it each term we can put it in this way and once you put it this thing then S n becomes this is 1 over 1 minus 2 that is 1 over 1 minus 1 by 2 this will be then 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 like this 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. So, get cancelled and finally, you are getting 1 and 1 uh, minus 1 over 1 plus. So, S n becomes 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus n all n plus 1. Now, as n tends to infinity it goes to uh, 1 minus 1 minus 0 that is goes to 1 as n tends to infinity. This term will go to as n tends to this will go to 0 and this is 1. So, the limit of this exists and equal to 1. So, this way we can identify this. So, these are few examples. Now, in case of the convergence series, there is a necessary condition that if a series is convergent, then its n -th term will always go to 0. That is a necessary condition for us. So, if a series whose n -th term does not go to 0, the series cannot be a convergent series. So, that is the criteria which we have the necessary condition the necessary condition for convergence of this series sigma a n n is 1 to infinity. So, this we will put it in the form if the series sigma <coughs> x n we are doing with x n. So, let us put it x n sigma x n n is 1 to infinity converges converges then limit of the x n must go to 0 limit of x n as n tends to infinity will be 0 that is any term will always go to 0. Okay. So, of proof let us see the solution or proof. So, what is our S n? S n basically uh, X n this is nothing but what? S n minus S n minus 1 because S n is the sum of the first term where S n stands for X 1 plus X 2 plus X n. So, S n minus 1 means up to X n minus 1. So, when you subtract you are getting S n. Now, this series is convergent. So, limit of the S n will exist. So, limit of S n and limit of S n minus 1 will be same. So, therefore, limit of X n when n tends to infinity this will be the limit of S n minus limit of S n minus 1, but both the limit will be the same. So, it will come out to be 0. So, this is the necessary condition for a series to be convergent, but this is not a sufficient condition, but this is not remark, but this is not a sufficient condition, sufficient condition that is if at any term of a series converges to 0, then it may or may not be a convergent series. For example, suppose I take this series sigma 1 by n, n is 1 to infinity. Here x n is what? 1 by n which tends to 0 as n tends to infinity and this we have seen that this series 
and but the series S n the series sigma 1 by n 1 to infinity diverges diverges as we have seen earlier because it is a harmonic series harmonic series in fact the proofs we have gone uh, already seen because the uh, if you remember we got the S n to be 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 up to 1 by n is it not and then it uh, keeps on increasing when you take the n then it keeps on increasing in fact limit of S n will go to uh, this keeps on increasing ok diverges. So, this we have already uh, increasing functions like this and keeps on like unbounded one. So, this uh, we are not uh, uh, already shown in the first lectures while going for this uh, series sequences. In case of sequence this example we have taken and shown the series diverges. So, here this diverging. If we take another example say sigma of 1 over y n square 1 to infinity. Now, here the x n which is 1 by n square goes to 0 as n tends to infinity, but this series converges what this series converges that will also be shown in the next few uh, after um, few uh, article to be covered when test for the series is there then this is 1 upon sigma n to the power p type where p is greater than 1 series will converge. So, that we will prove it hence from there you can say this is convergent, but what is the day you see that these two series in both the series the n term goes to 0 here also it goes to 0, but one series diverges other converges. So, the taking the sequence x n the n term change uh, checking whether it is tending to 0 or not uh, this will not give a conclude either just tending to 0 will not implies the series is convergent because it may be divergent also. However, if we take the any sequence x n any series x n whose nth term does not go to 0 then series has to be a diverging series because if it is convergent then correspondingly the nth term must go to 0. Okay. So, that is why here uh, this will uh, third point remark if in the series sigma x n 1 to infinity the n -th term of positive term sigma x n a series uh, if the x n is a sequence of uh, terms uh, if the limit of x n when n tends to infinity does not tends to 0 does not tends to 0 then the <laughs> series diverges then the series sigma x n 1 to infinity diverges diverging and the reason is very simple uh, the reason is why because if it is convergent then according to the necessary result earlier the necessary condition for a convergence of the series uh, n a term must go to 0. So, this is not happening therefore, it will diverge. So, if the series of positive term let us take the positive because the series of positive terms I'm sorry, positive terms okay, we are this course. So, this was the part of it. Okay. Now, there is another in, uh, result just like a Cauchy convergence criteria. We have a Cauchy convergence criteria for the sequence. Any sequence of real number is convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. That is, it satisfies the converge, Cauchy convergence criteria that after a certain stage, the difference between any two arbitrary terms of the sequence is less than epsilon, given epsilon, then we say the sequence sequence is convergent. So, correspondingly we also have a result for a series uh, that is known as the Cauchy convergence criteria for series. So, next is Cauchy convergence criteria for series. The result is the series 
sigma x n 1 to infinity converges if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 or for given epsilon greater than 0 there exist a positive integer n there exist uh, f sequence is there exist a positive integer capital n which depends on epsilon l, such that such that for all m n greater than or equal to capital m the following condition holds the mode of s m minus s n the partial sum of the series m a term up to m a term and up to n term is less than f sin l is less than f sin l for all n. that is equivalent to say is that mod of x n plus 1 if if i choose m is greater than n if m is greater than n then x n plus 1 x n plus 2 up to x m is less than epsilon l. that is up to here so this is known as the cauchy convergence criteria and this part is if and only if that is if the series converges uh, then sequence of its partial sum will satisfy this condition clear and obviously we uh, have defined the convergence of the sequences when the limit of the sm goes to uh, uh, limit exist so when the limit of the sequence of partial sum exists then only we say the series converges so suppose the series converges so limit of sn exists it means the limit of sn exists means it must satisfy the cauchy convergence criteria so this is nothing but the cauchy convergence criteria and conversely if this is true then the limit of the sequence sn must exist limit of the sequence sn exist means this series must be a convergent one so that shows the uh, connectivity okay now based on this we have a very interesting results the result is in the form of theorem let x n be let x n be a sequence of non negative real number real numbers then the series then the series sigma x n 1 to infinity converges if and only if the sequence of partial sum s of partial sums of partial sums sequence s uh, of s k of partial sum each sums is bounded is bounded ok and in fact when it is bounded the limit superior of this limit of s n will come out to the sum of this. So, let us see the proof of it ok. What is given is the sequence x n is a sequence of non negative real number positive numbers ok non negative <coughs> maybe 0 the series is convergent if and only if the sequence is of the partial sum is gone. So, suppose the series converges it means limit of the s n will be exist and what is our s n s n is basically the partial sum s 1 is the first term s 2 is the sum of the two terms 1 and 2 and since x 1 x 2 x n are non negative real numbers. So, maybe few may be 0 or maybe strictly greater than 0 also positive number. 
so s1 definitely less than equal to s2 which is less than equal to s3 and so on like this so what we are getting is the sequence of the partial sums so the sequence of partial sum of partial sums sequence of partial sums is a monotonic sequence monotonic sequence of increasing numbers or increasing monotonic sequence monotonic sequence increasing monotonic sequence of real numbers Now, what is the monotonic convergence theorem? Monotonic convergence theorem says any monotonic sequence which is either increasing or decreasing and if it is bounded, a monotonic sequence which is increasing and bounded above, then it must be convergent or monotonic sequence which is decreasing and bounded below must be convergent. Here, this is a monotonic sequence increasing sequence of real numbers and what is given is a series is convergent. Uh, if this sequence is giving to be bounded, suppose I take this part, if sequence is bounded, then it means this monotonic sequence is bounded. So, once it is bounded, it has to be convergent. Okay? So, if the sequence S k is bounded, then by monotone convergence theorem, monotone convergence theorem the uh, sequence s k is convergent that is limit of x k exist exist in fact it is in fact it is the upper bound for this it is the supremum value of all s k when the k belongs to integer supremum value it is upper bound for this we have not discussed upper bound we will take up after that, okay in fact this limit so if the s k is bound partial sum is bounded then we can immediately say by uh, monotone convergence theorem this limit will exist hence the series is convergent so this implies the series sigma x n 1 to infinity converges. Conversely, if given the series sigma x n 1 to infinity converges, it means what? That means the limit of the sequence s k over k exists. Fine. Now, every convergent sequence is a bounded sequence. So, this means that sequence s k is convergent. So, it is bounded. So, this proves the both way that if this series is convergent, then the sequence of the partial sum will be bounded sequence and vice versa if sequence of the partial sum is bounded, then the corresponding series will be convergent. So, that is the convergence criteria for that. Now, if we look that uh, uh, series uh, that what we are talking about you know we have seen this example sigma r to the power n 1 to infinity and we have seen that this series converges if mod r is less than 1. Okay. But if mod r is greater than all equal to 1, then what happens? What is our s k? s k becomes 1 plus r plus r, r to the power k minus 1. Now, this each one is greater than 1. So, it is greater than k, is it not? Because it is greater than 1. So, limit of s k does not exist unbounded. Therefore, s k sequence is not bounded. Okay? So, this series cannot be convergent because if it is convergent, the sequence of the partial sum must be bounded as per this result. So, this shows the series r to the power n 1 to infinity diverges if mod r is greater than 1. 
here we are taking one one more thing is here we are taking all the terms of the sequences to be non negative we cannot apply this result for the series whose terms are some are positive some are negative like this we cannot apply this result or we cannot do for the non neg uh, negative terms if all the terms are negative what we can do we can take the minus sign outside and make it all the term to be positive but if the series is alternately positive negative then of course this result is not helpful its result is only valid when the terms of the series are all non negative so here when we are taking mod r is greater than 1 basically we are choosing all r to be greater than 1 positive this is positive so r is greater than 1 taking r to be greater than 0 all positive then this type and r is equal to 1 obviously again we take 1 plus 1 plus n so s n diverges therefore it unbounded therefore it is not converged ok similarly for this now we have another results which is also very uh, testing and that result is yes <coughs> this next result which will help you in driving the few more results the for this result is in the form of theorem what this result says is suppose suppose x1 is greater than or equal to x2 is greater than or equal to x3 is greater than or equal to all terms are greater than or equal to 0 means non negative terms then the series then the series sigma x k or x n n is 1 to infinity x n 1 to infinity converges if and only if if and only if the series if and only if the series sigma k is equal to sigma k equal to 0 to infinity 2 to the power k x 2 to the power k x 2 to the power k x of x 2 to the power k that is a series is x 1 plus 2 times of x 2 plus 4 times of x 4 uh, x 4 plus 8 times of x 8 and so on this series converges ok. So, this is very uh, result which will help in driving the few more results with the help of this. So, this is the so proof let us what he says is suppose a series sigma x n is given whose all terms are non negative then the nature of this series that is a series will be convergent if the corresponding this series will converge and vice versa ok. So, in order to test this series to be convergent you com convert this series into this form which will be more comfortable uh, in a suitable form which can easily be proved to be a convergence or divergence. So, corresponding nature of this if it is convergent this will converge ok that is what he says ok. So, <coughs> let us consider the partial sum let S n stands for the partial sum of the first series say x 1 plus x 2 plus x n and let T k stands for the partial sum of the second series x 1 plus 2 times of x 2 plus 2 to the power k x suffix 2 to the power k. Suppose, we are taking this term uh, up to say 2 to the power k 2 k where the few there are few gaps is it not because it is not in continuation x 1 x 2 then after that x 3 is missing x 4 like this. So, we are choosing this term. Now, let us take the different cases for 
n which is strictly less than set 2 to the power k. Then what happened the S n? This will be less than or equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3. If we combine this and then let us write uh, this form x 2 k 2 to the power k plus x 2 to the power k plus 1 k plus 1 up to say 2 to the power x 2 to the power k plus 1 minus 1. Say I am taking x n to be less than this number. Obviously, when I am taking n is less than 2 to the power k. So, obviously, these terms which we are taking is much higher than this. Okay? And total terms in this case will be what? Now, this will be x. Now, x 1 is greater than x 2 x 2 is greater than x 3. So, basically this will be x 2 is greater than x 3. So, we can say this is x 3 is lower than x 2. So, it is less than 2 of x 2. So, this will be less than x 1 plus 2 times of x 2. Similarly, when you go for x 4, x 5, x 6, x 7 and x 8, then we will get next term will be 4 less than x 4. Okay? That term and continue this what will happen to this? There are only 2 to the power k terms. So, 2 to the power k into x 2 to the power 2 k. This will be because this is the smallest term and uh, this is sorry this is the largest term and rest are decreasing is it not? So, it will be less than this, but this term is nothing but what t k. So, what we get is that s n is less than or equal to t k. Okay. This is one thing. Now, for n, let us take n to be strictly greater than 2 to the power k. And then, again you rewrite suitably, S n can be written as greater than equal to x 1 plus x 2. And then, combine this term x 3 plus x 4 like this and last term start with the x 2 to the power k minus 1 plus 1 this term and up to go x to the x 2 to the power k up to this. So, what happen is this is greater than equal to now let us write x 1 is obviously greater than half of x 1 is it not because it is positive term then plus h 2 remain as it is then x 3. Now, x 3 x 4 x 3 is less than x 4 or x 4 is greater than. So, if I replace x 3 by x 4 then it is greater. So, it is greater than or equal to 2 times of x 4 2 times of x 4 this will be yes is it not uh, 2 times of x 4 and like this up to 2 to the power k minus 1 into x 2 to the power k like this. Okay? So, x 3 is greater x 3 is greater like this. Now, you check it this will be what if I take the t k t k is coming to be x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus 4 x 4 like this. So, it is half of this. So, basically it is the half of t k. So, what we get from 1 and 2 we get from this. So, from 1 and 2 we get from 1 and 2 what we get is that S n is less than or equal to T k and S n is greater than or equal to T k by 2. But what is T k and S n? Let us see let t k and s n the t s n is the partial sum n -th partial sum of the series sigma of x n and t k is the partial sum of the second series sigma 2 to the power k x 2 to the power k. Now, these partial sums satisfy this condition inequality 
So, if T k is bounded S n has to be bounded. Now, if S n is unbounded T k has to be unbounded. So, this implies the third criteria implies that the sequence S n and the sequence T k T k are either both or either both bounded or unbounded or both unbounded or both unbounded that is it. So, once they are bound they unbounded the result follows it means the nature of this series converges if only this converges. So, if they are bounded then the so this so this implies the series sigma x n converges if and only if sigma 2 to the power k 0 to infinity here 1 k is equal to 1 to infinity uh, I is ok n should I write is ok when sigma 2 to the power k x x 2 to the power k converges ok. So, this what we get it and this should be right n because otherwise that will be different ok. So, n is 1 to converge if only this can and this completes the proof ok. So, this can. now as a corollary to this or as a particular case as a particular cases ok we have this result theorem in the form the series sigma 1 by n to the power p n is 1 to infinity converges if p is strictly greater than 1 and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1 ok. So, this we get let us see the proof of this it will follow from the previous results. Now, obviously, if p is less than or equal to 0 suppose p is 0 then what happened this each term becomes 1. So, each term becomes 1 means thus n a term will not go to 0. So, when p is 0. So, in this case in this case the n h the x n which is 1 by n p n to the power p will not go to 0 because when p is less than equal to 0 this will come in the up and it will not go to 0 it will diverge because p is negative or 0. So, by necessary condition does not satisfy therefore, the series sigma 1 by n to the power p 1 to infinity diverges if p is less than equal to 0. Okay. Now, take that case when p is strictly greater than 0. So, if p is strictly greater than 0, then what we claim is when p lying between 0 and 1 even 1 it will diverge and when p is greater than 1 it will converge. Okay. So, now apply this result by the previous result by previous theorem the two series will have the name the two series the series sigma 1 by n to the power p 1 to infinity ok and the series sigma k equal to 0 to infinity 2 to the power k 1 by replace n by 2 uh, to the power k 2 to the power k power p because n to the power p I am replacing n x n x n by this x n is 1 upon n to the power p. So, replace n by 2 to the power k. So, n to the power p this two series. Uh, so, the series will have 
सेम नेचर दैट इज इफ दे आर इफ दिस इज कन्वर्जेंट इट हैज टू बी कन्वर्ज एंड वाइस एवर्स इफ दिस इज कन्वर्जेंट दिस एंड सिमिलरली डाइवर्ज इन फैक्ट ओके विल हैव द सेम नेचर बट वट इज दिस द सीरीज बट द सीरीज सिग्मा के जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी टू टू दि पावर के वन बाय टू टू दि पावर के पी k into p this is nothing but what this is equivalent to sigma k equal to 0 to infinity 2 to the power 1 minus 1 minus p into k okay now this is basically a geometric series this is a geometric series so if we take if we take if 1 minus p if 1 minus p 2 to the power 1 minus p if this part is less than 1 is strictly less than 1 then it will behave as a geometric series sigma 1 r to the power k where r is mod r is less than 1. So, this will be this series uh, then uh, it means that is that is what when it is uh, less than 1, when 1 minus p is negative, negative that is p is strictly greater than 1. So, in this case the series say fourth, uh, if this then the series fourth behaves as a geometric series, geometric series of the type of the form sigma r to the power say k where k is 0 to infinity and r is greater than 1 r is sorry less than 1 because r is less than r is this term. So, in that case it converges. So, the given series given series sigma k equal to 0 to infinity 2 to the power k 1 by 2 to the power k power p converges if p is strictly less greater than 1 and if p is less than if this thing is greater than 1 obviously then greater than 1. So, it is the limit of the any term does not go to 0 therefore, it diverges when equal to 1 also it will diverge. Okay. So, this so otherwise and obviously and obviously for p less than or equal to 1 the series diverges. Hence, the corresponding series series sigma 1 by n to the power p n is 1 to infinity converges if p is p is strictly greater than 1 strictly greater than 1 and diverges if p is less than equal to 1 and that is proved the result. Now, when p is equal to 1 it is a harmonic series and it diverges that what we show. When p is equal to 2 it is convergent and the example which we have chosen that necessary condition x n tends to 0 is not a sufficient condition is justified from here. Okay. So, that <coughs> now based on this we can also say another example let us say suppose or result because this will also be useful if p is greater than 1 if p is greater than 1 then the following series converge then number 1 sigma n equal to 2 to infinity 1 by n log n to the power p converges log n to the power p converges. Okay. 
when p is greater than 1 converges and if and otherwise and if p is less than or equal to 1 then the series 1 diverges diverges again it follows from the same thing if you go through that one then the follows the same thing how how the solution will come to test the sigma x n convergent what we do is we find out the 2 to the power k. So, the series sigma 1 by n log n to the power p 2 to infinity converges if and only if if and only if sigma k equal to 1 to infinity 2 to the power k log 1 by 2 to the power k log 2 to the power k power p. Obviously, when k is uh, 0, we cannot choose because log 1 is 0. That is why we are uh, avoiding that one. This is. So, this converges means if this converges by, but this converges is equivalent to what? Is it not the same as 1 by log 2 power p sigma of 1 by k to the power p when k is 1 to infinity and this series converges this is convergent if p is greater than 1 because this is the nth power test. So, this series converges. Similarly, if I take the second part suppose I take this series sigma n is equal to 2 to infinity 1 over n log n n log n into log log n into log log n log log n this diverges while the series sigma n is 2 to infinity 3 to infinity because this is n is I think 3 because otherwise this 2 will not n is 3 to infinity n is 3 to infinity 1 by n log n then log log n 2 power 2 converges and the reason is the same age above. Okay? So, this uh, thank you very much. Thanks.